Yes, you read the video title right. We did 2.8 litres per 100 km in this Nissan Note thanks to its Stellar e-Power Hybrid powertrain. Now, the Nissan Note is not coming to Malaysia, nor can you walk to a showroom and buy one of these. Instead, this is actually a registered unit owned by Edran Tanchong Motors for internal testing, something that they call exploratory model. ETCM has very kindly loaned us this car for us to sample and experience their e-power hybrid technology. And in today's video, I won't be reviewing the Nissan Note per se. Instead, I want to focus and break down every detail of this e-power hybrid technology to you who's watching this video. Hello everybody, this is Adrian for Webcar.my and I'm all about the details. The term hybrid means having two different sources of propulsion working in harmony to give drive to a car. Traditionally, an internal combustion engine paired to an electric motor. However, hybrids, there are actually two types of hybrids. The first one being a parallel series hybrid whereby the electric motor and internal combustion engine works together to give drive to the wheels. So you have your more conventional hybrid cars, for example, your Toyota Prius, Honda CRZ, plug-in hybrids like your BMW 330e or Volvo XC90 T8. The second type is your series hybrid, where only the electric motor sends drive to the wheels. The internal combustion engine works as a generator or range extender to give charge to the battery pack. So you have your Nissan e-Power or BMW i3 Rex. In a parallel hybrid, it's usually a low output motor just to give assistance to the internal combustion engine when setting off or cruising at speeds just to help with lowering fuel consumption. But a series hybrid, you can think of it as an EV where you can fill in with petrol. The benefits are zero range anxiety and zero plug-in time. Nissan's e-Power is driven by an electric motor with an output of 80 kilowatts or 109 horsepower and 254 newton meters of torque. The electric motor is then powered by a 1.5 kilowatt hour battery pack and that battery pack is charged by a 1.2 liter three-cylinder petrol engine with an output of 79 horsepower and 103 newton meters of torque. Now, all of this sounds very complicated, very complex. However, in reality, it's actually a very simple and straightforward affair. It's just get in and drive. You are in EV mode all the time and the combustion engine only wakes up to give charge to the battery pack. So you get the full EV driving experience instantaneous torque and sillily low fuel consumption. Now this to me is the perfect example of an energy efficient vehicle because the engine, the internal combustion engine will only operate at its maximum efficiency all the time. Based on our wildcard fuel consumption test, we managed to return 2.8 litres per 100 kilometres which translates to 35.7 kilometres per litre. That is very close to Nissan's official claim of 2.68 litres per 100 km. The best part is, we did not achieve those numbers by hypermarling or staying behind large lorries, nothing like that. All we did was drove within the speed limits, did some instantaneous torque pulls at toll booths, and we still managed to achieve 2.8 litres per 100 kilometres. Like all EVs, the electric motors have a sweet spot in its operating speed, and in this Note e-Power, it's between 80 to 110 kilometres per hour. Above 110 kilometres per hour, you will see fuel consumption suffer drastically. And that's because when you have to cruise above 110 km per hour, the electric motors have to work harder to sustain that speed, which then sucks up more battery juice. And then the internal combustion engine has to operate for longer periods of time just to give the uh, battery more charge, which then consumes more fuel. In all Nissan EV and e-Power models, there's this e-pedal function which is able to realize one pedal driving. And it literally means what it means. Driving with one pedal. It may sound counterintuitive at first, but in real world practice, it's actually very natural. It took me literally five minutes to get accustomed to e-pedal driving. And oh my, it's just so easy. So how it works is that you accelerate normally, as I'm doing now, and the moment you lift off your foot from the accelerator pedal, the car will slow down dramatically via regenerative braking. It will slow down until it comes to a crawling speed where it applies the physical brakes to bring the car to a complete stop. So you literally accelerate and brake with just one pedal. You don't have to worry when you lift off your foot and your car slow down a lot and 
you know, have cars coming from behind because the brake lights will automatically come on when uh, you're driving with e-pedal mode. Now this e-pedal helps you to be more aware as a driver so you're more conscious of your surroundings. In turn, you drive more efficiently, helps to save more fuel and recoup energy more effectively. Now something that you might not have think of is that hybrid cars generally have better weight balance compared to pure ICE cars and that's because the battery pack is mounted uh, near the rear axle which then shifts the center gravity of the car lower and that helps to give the car a much more poised handling. Now I won't say that this note is very sharp to drive, very dynamic, no but the weight balance of this car is just lovely. The battery pack also helps with ride comfort because of the extra weight. When you go over bumps and humps, the extra weight just helps to dampen the rebound. Give you a much more just wafty kind of riding experience. With the recent tax exemption announcement for full electric vehicles, this move will not suddenly push everyone to own an EV. The cheapest EV on sale right now is the Nissan Leaf that costs over 180,000 ringgit with tax. Even with exemption, it will still cost circa 160,000 ringgit and that is still out of reach for the majority of Malaysians who are in the B40 and N40 income group. I mean, would you commit to a 9-year loan paying 1,500 ringgit a month for a car that only has 200 kilometers of range? Another concern is charging. Yes, more and more charging stations are popping up and charging has become more accessible and convenient. But imagine this, if every household in Malaysia owns one EV and you live in a condo, how is everyone going to charge at the same time? And whether it's our power grid, our national power grid is able to sustain the mega surge in demand for electricity. So the next best solution for a cleaner and greener environment would be a hybrid. A series hybrid in particular, like this e-power. 2.8 liters per 100 km is proof that it's able to drastically slash CO2 emissions, fuel consumption, and your monthly petrol bill. It's time our government redefined energy efficient vehicles and give the right support and incentives to proven, sustainable, achievable solutions. Because mass adoption of EVs will not happen anytime soon. Hybrids are here to stay, not just as a transitionary model, but as a achievable, sustainable solution for a cleaner environment for all.